Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme, exploring experimental music. Regardless of genre, just really pushing the boundaries of sonic expression in unique or different ways. Today we're going to be looking at the band Deerhoof with the track Look Away off of their Friend Opportunity album. Let's dive in. The unbalanced vocal place or voicing placement. There we go. It's very disorienting. And mixing that with the irregular harmonic elements. Those are beautiful little ideas though. placement is really interesting here. If anyone was curious about time, our last section was four bars of three. This one just four bars of four. Like getting lost in the woods.
I think it's impossible to miss the psychedelic influence on this as well. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to tell you the time signature for this section. For all I know, it's free time. Well, we're getting back into it. It's interesting just the hair bit of distortion on it. Maybe that's clipping. But it makes it sound uh, alien. Given how quiet and childlike and innocent it kind of leans into you and then having this grit, this, this, this fuzz put on top of it. Like this part for the most. There's some beautiful ideas, but it wasn't gonna last. Yeah. Definitely has that, uh... Like a 50s sci-fi... The killer just appeared on the scene kind of vibe to that, uh, that stinger they had.
I like the little bluesy bum. Even that, I mean, so these these little uh, ornamental lead-ins are very bluesy. Space is very important here, too. I noticed that as far as this week has gone, liturgy was liturgy was a lot. I thought that might have been the peak of the week as far as abrasion goes. Yesterday, Shushu wasn't so bad. As I mentioned, it's one of the more palatable songs I've heard from them, even if it wasn't something that I would say has widespread appeal. I, I was I was wrong though. I think Deerhoof is I don't necessarily want to say the most experimental. I don't think that that's uh, a worthwhile level of idea to to go upon, but I do want to say that so far Deerhoof has taken the crown for the most abrasive, the least uh the more abstract. The most abstract. It's the one I feel is the most difficult to talk about in traditional terms. You know, to break this down into what they're doing, I don't think really does much justice to the track. I don't even know if it's really worth diving into for the little grasp that I had on the technicalities of the performance. Music like this is feeling music. Where to really get not even just the most out of it, but to get something out of it, it really takes just uh, personally connecting and engaging with the music as art rather than that's a good way to word this rather than academic much like um what did we listen to was it apex twin no no it was uh attacker uh when i mentioned that any technical breakdown of what they're doing is really only useful to an academic or uh, an electronic artist or even possibly a drummer. I really don't feel like there's a lot in this song that's worthy of breaking down for a casual listener. At least not in a way that I grasp it any differently than you do. Uh, for those who don't participate in active listening and try to tear music apart, this is just noisy for me. I mean, <laughs> there's there's movements from harmony to, to consonants, sorry, from dissonance and consonants, 
and sometimes they're overlaid on each other. There's layering in here that, I mean, it, it is. I, I don't really know what it adds, but there's some sections that are heavily layered to where they're incredibly dense, and some sections where they're so sparsely layered that there's barely anything going on at all. In fact, there at the end, we had more silence than sound for that penultimate section. The vocals are semi-Disney-esque. Uh, Anybody else? Get, like, not, not modern Disney, but classic Disney. There's something about them that feels very clean and innocent. Like the songs from Snow White or Cinderella or anything like that. And I think it's interesting that we do hear some traditionally Renaissance ideas throughout this. In fact, the ending of this track and why it made me crack up as much as I did is because that little fluttering of sounds that we got out of uh, the strings there, disregarding the mild dissonance in there, but if it had all been harmonious and, more importantly, resolved, it would be an exceptionally traditional Renaissance-style ending that Disney likes to use in their older soundtracks, especially towards the end of a film, particularly if it's a musical, when we reprise one of the main lines, like the main song, probably the I Want track from our uh, main character, we reprise the, the main melody of it towards the end. We put new words on it because now they have found what they wanted out of life. And then we end with the little flurry of resolved string sounds. Like, it is so stereotypical of this style that I, it's almost a strange coincidence. Because I have no idea, I, like, I can't, maybe, maybe they were thinking of Disney films when they made this. Um... But I, I, I find it very unlikely, for whatever reason, that I'm drawing conclusions both to a Disney-esque ending for the song and a Disney-esque element to the vocal delivery in a way that kind of feels like a subversion to that as a whole. And it makes me want to kind of look at the song through that entire lens. I had mentioned early on Earlier, before I picked up on any of this, because I don't even know if we had vocals yet, we certainly were at the end of the track, where I said that this felt like going th or getting lost in the woods. And I think a lot of that isn't particularly any one aspect. There's certainly the danger and tension in the sounds. There's the scattering of sounds, kind of placed wherever they want in the sound sphere. It's, Instrument placement was really strange in the first uh, few minutes, and we'll get into that in a bit. But there is also a traditional in the woodsiness to it. Something about what was played here. Maybe it is the semblance of a chord progression. Maybe it's the instruments used. I really don't know, but it reminded me of music that we would see in older animated classics when our main character was in the woods in danger. Maybe not necessarily lost, but there was danger there. There's something about this whole song that the more I think about it, feels like the type of music I used to hear in Merry Melodies, Looney Tunes, Disney, any of the more renaissance style based music oriented animation and so there is an impressionistic element to a lot of this where it feels like sure it's experimental as far as traditional writing goes but it's actually very conservative regarding the use of instruments to tell a a painted story and it uses a lot of tropes of ideas 
I've heard in other places where it's part of a multimedia project where it's paired with visuals, but the visuals don't have audio. Everything is portrayed through the music. But as I mentioned, it's a subversion of that because so many of these elements tend to take things in a different direction. I don't know if it's particularly done tongue in cheek. There are a couple sections in here when I realized the schism between my relationship to the sounds and how they were using them caused me to chuckle. And that makes it feel a little tongue in cheek, but I don't necessarily think that that was their intention. I think it's just supposed to be subversive and not parody. Actually, I don't even know that it's supposed to be subversive. Again, there's so many connections here that I have no idea if this is what they were actually aiming for. But it, it becomes subversive in a way that explores these types of soundscapes in a bit of abstraction. And what I mean by that is while there might be a timbre, a couple of instruments, a chord progression that is utilized in these other areas that I, I recognize these sounds from, what I end up hearing here is very different. And it tells its own story. And this is why I don't necessarily think any of this is intentional, despite me seeing these connections, these relationships between these sounds. Because nothing in here is something I've heard before. <laughs> there are illusions. If I look between the lines, if I cut out some of the noise and focus only on the consonant, I can see these patterns forming. But if I take it in all as a whole, I've never heard anything like this before. It is chaos at many, many sections. Even just right off the bat, we start off with a heavy emphasis towards the left side in a way that feels completely unbalanced. Not only that, but once we begin to bring in more instruments and fill the space in, it's not exactly a balanced sound either. Some instruments are much larger than others. The drums in particular off to the right are drastically fuzzed out, almost sounding as if at points they're clipping. They sound monstrous in size, but volume-wise, they're really not that much louder than everything else, which feels like uh, an optical illusion, a sonic illusion. It certainly doesn't feel right. And that idea of not feeling right, everything just being a bit off, permeates the entire track. Instruments are constantly at an interesting volume. Uh, I guess the way that you could say that is that they took the production in an experimental way as well. The music is certainly avant-garde in a lot of ways. I, I don't think many people would listen to what's being played here and think, oh, this isn't experimental at all. I hear this every day. But I think when you dig into the production as well, the placement of instruments, uh, where they are across the x-axis, the y-axis, um, what kind of timbres they have, how their volume relationships are with the other instruments, you'll find a lot of experimentation on the production side as well in ways that produce a sound that is familiar but not. Everything is correct-ish, but also just far off enough to draw attention to it in a way that it almost is a sonic uh, uncanny valley. Actually, that's, that's a really good place. Good thing I went there. That is a really good description of this. There's a lot of sections in here that if I squint... I can see what they are, but if I take it all at face value, there's something very odd, very off about it. And uh, what that creates in me while I'm listening to this, my experience going through this track is unease around most corners. Even the moments when we had very harmonious harmonic resolution, uh, harmonious harmonic, even when we have harmonic resolution and a lot of it, 
I was weary of when it was going to end, and sure enough, it didn't take very long to get out of that. This band, or at least this song in particular, is not too interested at being resolved for any long stints of time. And so a lot of this feels antagonistic to me in a way that I'm sure some of you aren't going to feel. I know this pops up often when dissonance comes up. And I know my relationship to dissonance is rather conservative. I'm, I don't like it. Um, it's, it's a, it sends shivers down my spine. It's just, I, I have a lot of training of, it's not a good sound and I'm trying to break out of it, but it's, it's a lot of, a lot of history of being told not to lean into that. And so when I hear this, I hear danger, I hear antagonism, I hear friction, I hear anxiety and dread. Uh, I hear all of this constantly in this track and others may find this beautiful. A lot of it rests on the listener's relationship to dissonance and what they think of it. And so when I say that this song is very antagonistic to me. I, I don't mean that as a objective observation of this track. I don't think it is necessarily an objective, or, sorry, uh, an objectively antagonistic track. I don't think that it is purposefully filled with dread. That is what I get out of it, though. Although, I just noticed back at the uh, title, it is called Look Away. And usually that's a warning. And it almost feels like I was told to not look at this. And I decided to not only look at it, but open this box up. And everything inside is searing my eyeballs. I was told not to do this. And instead, all of this is now haunting me. And that is kind of the way I, I feel about this one. But I just, it's so interesting to me that it's transported through the vehicle of Renaissance multimedia stuff. It's so weird. I'm going to look at the lyrics real quick. I don't remember there are a lot of them. Only two sections, right? We'll see what's going on there. And then we'll wrap this one up. And these are sparse and vague. There's a repetition of love, no love, no love. This is repeated in the middle of the track as well, but switches over from love, no, love, no, and so, and so. We do have one little stanza at the beginning. A pencil with a hand, a person with a plan, a whole man. I go searching for the fellow. And then the end of the track is a repetition of let's start wonderful days over. It's also disconnected to me. I don't see a thread that ties any of it together and even within individual ideas I'm failing to follow through again it's all very vague to me but it's vague in a way that I suppose works well with the music which is also vague there's elements in it I recognize but a lot of it is just it's stuff I have a, a tough time grasping I guess you could say this track is pretty experimental. Those are my thoughts on Deer Hoof's Look Away. Let me know yours down in the comment section. Give me your thoughts, opinions, perspectives, and anything else you'd like to add. Above the comment section in the description box, you'll find a link for Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We do have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual.
Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.